The John and Thady Gosden train sweet enough. It's off the mark at the fourth attempt. John, well done indeed. Um, Rab Havlin has just come over and said what a nice, neat filly this is. Yeah, she's very genuine and she handled a fast ground here and got a little, you know, a good, good level of speed and she won it over seven, so I'm very, very pleased for the uh, breeder. She's, she's a nice, always been a lovely filly, great attitude and, uh, and she gives of her best and you know, as a trainer can ask for no more than that. Is seven fellows about right for her at the moment? At the moment, yeah, we should get a mile, no problem. I just wanted to touch on the afternoon that we've got here. It's great to have people here, we keep saying that, but Dr Jerry Hill, MBE, has been rewarded and awarded, recognised for his services to horse racing and just been getting a few trainers to, to give their feedback on how his help has fast-tracked racing's return. It's invaluable, isn't it? Yeah, you can go back to March last year when lockdown came. Yeah. Obviously, racehorses or any animal that uh, an athlete cannot be locked up in a box or stall, so we're out exercising our horses every morning keeping our correct distances, following all the protocols, but we were training away throughout the half of the March, the whole of April, the whole of May, in beautiful weather, actually. It was. And a lot of people came out and said, these horses shouldn't be out, they should be back in their stables. And three weeks later, they were all coming out and saying, could we have a ride? Because on their day, of, their moment of <laughs> exercise, their hour of exercise, they prefer to ride a horse. But it is a very safe environment, obviously out training in the open air. And when you come racing the same, and Jerry did a great job working with the with the ministry explaining to them we're not cooped up inside in you know we're not inside factories we're not inside small offices we've got open air big space and to that extent we were able after a lot of you know we had to be honest we had to lobby quite strongly but with his steering us and in, in, in doing following all the biosecure protocols we got back racing on June the 1st and we managed to run amazingly a season, a little bit strange, but we got the whole season off. Royal Ascot on its dates within two weeks of racing starting. And we had a, a, an exciting year of racing. We kept the horses healthy, happy and well. You cannot lock them up and not exercise them. It's, they, 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 well, they will go completely mad and hurt themselves. So to that extent, he did a wonderful job working with government and uh, we, we found our NTF and the uh, BHA and we all worked together and got the racing on. But he was very much uh, the guiding hand on what is possible and what is not. But with that in mind, the sport was one thing that was brilliant, as you rightly said, but afternoons like this, on a sunny afternoon and seeing how well attended it is, is that suddenly a reminder of what horse racing is to so many people and why it's so brilliant we kind of almost got there? Yeah, look, we, we started racing June the 1st and it was a strange feeling to go to Asset. You parked in the middle, you got a brown paper bag, very nice, a sandwich in it and the race car, and you, you had the whole grandstand to yourself. Yeah. So it went from being surreal feeling to race like that to completely soulless. I mean, the one thing you learn, and you only have to watch Wembley and think of the 90-95% of people who, who went there to enjoy a game and be friendly to the supporters from the other team, from Italy or whatever, not yeah. with the lunatics that shouldn't be allowed near it. But community, being with people, social interaction. Possibly the problem we have now, everything's on Zoom, everyone's looking at their screen, they're on their mobile phone, they're on their laptop, they're on their iPad. And there's a little bit of a danger that we'll lose the ability to have a conversation with people. We'll lose social cohesion, if you like. And I don't think the human brain was quite designed to take on endless bombardment of social media day in, day out. And one thing, you come racing, you come in open space, you bump into your friends, you talk to your friends, old pals, people I've seen like that. When you have a conversation, it's odd. You might have something to eat together, something to drink together. And that is, uh, I drove out last night with my wife we went uh, to Covent Garden and the, actually the old garden was just humming with people having dinner, just thrilled to be out. We drove out through Shoreditch and yeah. Hackney. The place was heaving, the streets were heaving. People want to be together and enjoy themselves. And so when we got the crowds back, which we have now and hopefully from the 19th, out in our big open air spaces, wearing your mask if you go near here, whatever, we're still following certain protocols in the paddock and saddling. Yeah. But look, it's been, a, it's been a long road. You learn a lot of things about life, but you do learn that people prefer to be together rather than isolated in boxes. John, thank you very much okay. indeed.